only to Germany with 12 points with victories against Poland, Sweden, Portugal and Chinese Taipei. So this is a significant step up in the competition for the two sides and we're away and it looks like France have an edge here through Dibeli. Does Dibeli get to the ball first? He does but then it's left behind him. Now the rules of Canupolo say that the person who sprints for the ball has to be the person to gain possession of it. So because Lignel there for France, the secondary player to the ball was the first to gain possession. It is with Denmark. So Denmark with their first attacking opportunity of the game then. So Iwerson over to Ibu. Ibu back to Iwerson. And now on this left-hand side at the moment is Kleist. E Ibu. Iwerson goes himself through the middle. Takes an immediate shot, saved. Good save, good opening. Shooting by Iwerson, keeping the goalkeeper on his toes right from the very beginning. And Boudelal with an important first save for him there in the game. Iwerson considered one of the best shooters in the sport. And they're trying to make space for him on this left-hand side at the moment. Denmark through Christiansen on the left-hand side of the zone, trying to make space. There's a play on advantage here and a warning for France already. That warning coming for Dibeli, so he will be on that warning for the rest of the game. <laughs> Kleist over to Ibu. Back to Kleist. Kleist back out. So Denmark then, they've got two players on the inside at the moment. I think they're just trying to split the interest off the French zone, but they're pinning the middleman and the side. He was in cuts in to try and take an angle there, but nothing for him, so it comes back out. So it's Christian, sorry, Dorborg. Dorborg in the middle for Denmark, trying to make space. He's currently underneath Linné, the French captain. Oh, shot coming from distance. I think the shot clock was running out there, so it goes for a corner, blocked on the way through by Dibeli. So, good opening foray from Denmark here. France yet to have possession in the game. And two and a half minutes played. So, can Denmark get the early breakthrough here? They started well with confidence. I'd suggest that they are the underdogs in this game with France topping the group on the other side. And currently playing nicely. So, Kleist to Ibu to Iwerson. Iwerson, no pass inside for him. Ops to come back out. Seeing a very similar tactical play here from Denmark that we saw in the last game from Great Britain and Germany. They're just playing with these two on the inside, three around the back. Now they're looking to pin in the French zone. that has got space on the left-hand side here at the moment. That opens up the door down the middle. Ibu to Kleist. Kleist looking for the wrap shot underneath. He has nothing coming. Foul there on the inside, though. I think that was by Christensen. And France look away on the break. They're an incredibly fast-breaking team. There's an opportunity here on the right, but they opt for the middle. That's nicely into Cotter. Cotter, will he shoot? Does over the top. Cotter with a miss over the top of the bar. I think he had the option on the left to play it back to Patan, but he went for it himself. Patan would have had a one on one, but there you see the speed of France on the turn. And in only four, 10 seconds, 10 seconds that France have had the ball in the game and they have already had the best opportunity in the game to score so that will keep Denmark second guessing themselves as they look to make this attack. Attack is a game of risk versus reward. You're trying to open up the defence with insightful passing but every risk you take could lead to change over possession and that's one there. That lob ball over the top is grabbed by France. Is it is? Oh it's nicely regathered. Foul against Denmark, though. And it's a foul that Denmark will take because there was a definite opportunity on the break there. Long shot coming. Goal! The shot from distance by Alain Linel. Confidence from France to go from distance and they've caught Denmark unable to get their goalkeeper in in time on the break despite having managed to slow down the ball. So... France take a 1-0 lead in the game. 
And Denmark find themselves down despite having almost all of the possession in the game so far. Gleist across to Iwerson. It's behind Iwerson. Has to play it into the water with his blade. He resets once more. It's back to Kleist. Kleist on this right-hand side now. Has Larsen. Larsen back to Kleist. Iwerson. Does he have a pass on the inside? He doesn't. So Denmark are definitely hunting for an inside pass. But France are looking really strong in the middle at the moment. Cotter doing a very good job of holding his space. It's breaking up a little bit for France here. Will Iwerson opt for the shot himself? There's 14 seconds on the clock. Time running out. He gets pushed back out. So it's with Larson. Larson has to go for the shot himself, but that's blocked and it's going to fall for French possession. And not the best worked opportunity with such little time on the clock. Needed a runner to be at real speed to have a chance. And now, ooh, Debelli considered the long shot again and Iwerson's covering the net, but he was just out of it at the point where he considered the shot. But with France having a one goal lead, they opt against that risk. And now we will really see the first full French possession of the game. So Batin and Dueno playing it between each other. Batin to Dueno. Dueno looking for the pass through over the top. He opts against it. Nicely covered off there by Denmark through Larsen. Denmark playing a 2-2 defensive structure at the moment, trying to cut down this French attack. That's nicely worked though, blocked over the top. Big celebration by Denmark. This is their first defensive set, so they want to keep France out. It's a changeover in the players there by Denmark. Will they change their structure or will they stick with 2-2? Let's see, it looks like they've gone to a 3-1 structure now. No, maybe. Sticking with the 2-2. It's a very, very tight 2-2 structure. Currently, Ibu just kind of sitting in between the top and the side. He was in an Ibu off the top then. So an aggressive defensive tactic 2-2 compared to the more traditional 3-1 in the game. Now, Cotter, Cotter doesn't have the shot. Round the back it comes. Duheno over to the left-hand side. Shooting, slow ball, goal! Oh, and that's audacious from Debelli. Rather than go for the powerful shot, he gives it the slow ball shot. Catches the goalkeeper, Christiansen out. And France go 2-0 up in this semi-final. As a goalkeeper, you're waiting there for the powerful shot to come. And when it comes slow, it can catch you out and you end up bringing your blade slightly forward to brace for the impact. And the ball just floats over the top of it and into the back of the net. So, great change up in the shot there by Debelli to take his side to a 2 0 lead. And France will be extremely happy with this start. All the pressure is now on Denmark. Can they find a way back in here, Denmark? Larsen then. Larsen changes. Goal! There it is! Denmark straight back into the game. And that just came from a simple compression of the French zone. And Boudelau unable to get anything to that shot from the outside. So Denmark keep themselves in the game. It's 2-1 to France. Only two minutes now left on the half. 40 seconds on the shot clock for France. That's dropped behind. Can Denmark get to this? Kleist trying to come through. Puts pressure on Cotter. Just a little bit late there. It's a shame Denmark's... Other top player was tied up on the right-hand side, so was unable to compete for the ball there. So now it's Kleist and Torbor, who are hunting around the top. And Torbor is quite a large defensive format player. So this isn't a intentionally heavy chasing 2-2. It's a hard defensive structure. And I think they drop back at the sides, but that's left that side angle shot. Big save by Christiansen from Cotter. So Denmark comfortable for Christiansen to protect the goal from the angles. And they're just preventing as much as possible anything coming through the middle of their defense. Liné. Liné. Across the ball comes to the right hand side. Boudelau takes a fumble from Batap. He's back in possession. Linné, Cotter, sitting on the left, on the inside at the moment. 
is Lignel. Lignel, the first goal scorer for France, trying to make some space against Tourbo, who's now taken up that middle position. Denmark now sitting much more with a three-in-one structure. Iview needs to be careful of Cotter wrapping around the back here, but that's a nice run in from Batan for himself. The left-hander opts against the shot. Too many paddles between him and the goal. Over it comes to Cotter. Can he find the ball inside? No. He's going to have to shoot. He does shoot. It's blocked out for a corner. I think Ibu took a ball or a hand to the face guard there, but he's back into the game. France playing quickly from the corner. That's nicely way around by Budalau. Big save by Christensen. <clears throat> and a paddle foul committed afterwards. Time out, and the Denmark are enraged at the end of the game there. They wanted that ball to make something. I thought there was only two seconds left on the game, but Boudelau threw the ball away quite significantly. Even though it was a foul to Denmark, and I think he's gotten away with it. I saw the other referee give a warning to Boudelau. Maybe the context of it not really being enough time for Denmark to work anything, but still... intentional dismissal of the ball and now France will have to be very careful doing anything like that in the second half as well. So France lead at half time in this men's semi-final from De Qing 2024 here in China. A quick word to our sponsors at half time. Thank you to the ICF, the Chinese Canoe Association, Huzhou City, De Qing County, Yupin Sports, Gokong Group and the Tour Sports and wherever you're joining us from, thank you for joining us, especially any of our European supporters, watchers, joining live early in the morning, your time. Let's hope this game continues to develop into such a tight affair in the second half for you to see who's going to make it through to the final later on today. So the message is at half time for these teams. France will be very pleased with their start. They kept Denmark out consistently whilst they had possession and then scored two lightning goals from their own brief periods in possession to go 2-0 up. Denmark will be very happy to have worked a goal back into the game. And they, I think, will not change anything tactically. They'll just hope that they can keep ratcheting up the pressure on this French zone. I think maybe one or two more significant runs down the middle to come from the Danish to try and open up this French defence. So Denmark finished fifth at the last World Championship, so they've already beaten their result from last year. Whilst France finished sixth in their home World Championships, it was disappointment for France two years ago for this side. And looking for redemption here in China. So it's Denmark beating France to that fifth position only two years ago, and now they're meeting in the higher contest of the semi final. So progress for both of these teams, but who can secure at least a silver medal from these championships with victory here? We are ready to go then. Looks like it's going to be either Linné. Or De Belli, depending on where the ball goes. It's going to go to the middle, so I think it's going to be De Belli, and it's De Belli up against Larson. De Belli gets to it first, and Larson makes contact with the body on the way through, so he gets a warning. So Larson now needs to be careful. Strong victory that by De Belli, full commitment to get the ball for his team. So France with the first possession off the second half. And they will look to build an attack here. Batat from the left, sorry, from the right-hand side, from the left-hander. Left-hander preferring to play on the right generally because it opens up the goal face more for them for the shot. Duheno on the ball. Duheno. Ball comes back out to Dibeli. France playing with two on the inside at the moment. No, they're back to four on the outside now. And they've just left Richet on the inside for France at the moment. Batin starts the run. It's coming through the captain. Over to Duhano with a shot. Far shot. Good save. And a paddle foul committed by France. So Christensen again.
keeping those long distance shots from France out. And actually France, I think, ultimately giving possession away there quite easily, really. That shot didn't look massively on from Duino. He scored quite a few goals like that in the championship just by catching the keeper off guard. But we're now into the top, top flight of the competition. It'd be very difficult to catch the goalkeeper sleeping from distance now. Iwerson then on the left-hand side. We haven't seen him take a shot in the game yet. Larsen, the goal scorer for Denmark. Popped back around from Ibu. Oh, that's messy. Regathered by Iwerson. Nice touch on it by Duheno, though, to almost force a turnover there. Larson then. He goes over the top to Iwerson. Can Iwerson? There's a little pocket of space on the left-hand side here. He's seen it. He opts to make the run himself. Will he take the shot? He does. Is that going to stay in the field of play? It does. So Iwerson just there seeing... Christiansen having made the screen for him that well, Christiansen is out of position, the goalkeeper. He's right the way down the field at the moment. And it's an open net goal on the break from France. And from one end of the pitch to the other by them, simple, clean, clinical passing to find Lignel. And France take, oh, Dibeli, sorry. Seven and the one. Dibeli finishing off for France then. And France take a 3-1 lead here with seven and a half minutes to play. So just a sniff of an opportunity for Iwerson there, but unable to convert. So can Denmark find the response? You feel they will really need the next goal in the game. There's a warning for France, a six meter obstruction by Batin. So coming out too high. That's good from Denmark. I want to see them try and hit this middle angle more. Kleist with the run himself. They're taking it on more now, Denmark. Ibu from the left-hand side. There's a definite opportunity on the left here. It's covered across, though. Richet does well for France to cover. Ibu round the corner. That's nice. Iwerson, Kleist, sorry, trying to make it in two. Ibu doesn't take the shot. 27 seconds. Iwerson on the run shot. Blocked. Down. That's going to be a new minute for Denmark then. The clinical performance this has been from France so far. Only really that shot over the top by Duheno that was missed. Kleist then on the ball now. Ops inside. He's considering the shot here. Can he get that ball inside? To... No, he can't. To the goal scorer in the first half, Larson. Kleist back on the ball, still in the zone. Three paddles in his face. Comes back out. So. Sawyer, but Sawyer lays it back off. He was in the shot, saved! Kept out by Boudelau, and Boudelau gains possession and then loses it, and it comes back to Ewerson. Oh! And Ewerson, seeing the empty net, goes for the backhanded shot to try and finish it, but it's hit the bar. And he's entirely capable of getting that in the net, but did he ever pass back out? Was there an opportunity to use one of the other Danish players there? We'll have to see if we get a replay of that for you. So, Liné to Duheno. Duheno to Liné. Now France, five minutes and 15. It's a little too much time to try and see out the game. Although I don't think they're going to be in a rush to attack. They take the shot clock down to 22 seconds. 19, 18 now, so it's ticking down. It's going to have to be a shot here. Debelli on the ball, lays it back inside. It's with Bata on the right-hand side. He gets it to Duhano. Duhano will shoot here. Clock's running out. Seven seconds, does shoot. Blocked out by Ewerson. That was good defense by Denmark. Torbo just lifting the French line back and putting pressure on Duhano, who was drifting backwards as that was taken. Now Denmark pushed from the corner. They've gone for the corner trap here. They want to try and make this pass out as difficult as possible and see if they can affect a touch. Swift, France, push coming in from Ewerson on the captain, Liné. He comes back to Liné now. I haven't seen too much of Liné in the game so far, which is surprising. 
But he now takes the ball forward with a little dribble. Gives it back to Duheno. 34 seconds on the clock now and time beginning to turn against Denmark. Still time. But they will need something very special now to try and get back into this one. Duheno then. Begins the run for France. Ball comes over the top to Debelli. You think Debelli's going to cut back around here. He does. Tries to go around the outside of his own player. Plays it inside to Linné. Linné looking for a pass. Pops it over the top to Duheno. Duheno sliding down past Iwerson. Tries to pass it inside. But there's a foul committed by Denmark, by France there. And now Denmark hold on to the ball. And we've got a timeout. Yep, that's a clear slowing down of the ball by Batin to prevent the break. And France could have been in trouble there. And having done that at the end of the first half, Patin and Denmark frustrated then by it, by Boudelau putting the ball out. I don't think Patin can have any complaints about getting the green card there. Very, very clearly looked to the referee, saw the foul and chose to suffocate the ball, make it difficult for them to get away on the break. So Denmark will have a one-man advantage here for a two-minute period or until they score. Can they get the first goal quickly? Iwerson with a shot, blocked for a corner. It's going to be a new ball from this side of the pitch as you view it. Larson goes himself. Larson back to Iwerson. 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 Over the ball comes to Larson. Back to Iwerson. Iwerson shaping. Shaping. Ibu on the left hand side to Iwerson. This is vital for Denmark. They need to score from this phase. Larson shot gone out. 217 left on the game. There's only 47 seconds left on the green card now. Iwis had always gone past him. France can't afford to push out though. It's back to Iwerson again. Iwerson to Larson. Larson looks over to the right from Ibu. Iwerson shaping up a big run. Oh, Larson ups against it. Debelli had Iwerson's run covered. There's got to be space in the middle there. Got to make the run down the middle. I Ibu does now. Is he going to shoot himself? Will he lay off? He does shoot. Saved. Big save by Boudelau. Important save for France. And they have 15 seconds now. Six seconds. Four seconds. France are going to be back to five. Back to five now come France. Denmark can't make the most of the one-man advantage again. And this game is beginning to slip away from them unless they score here. Larsen trying to find the ball into Kleist. But sees that it's well covered at the moment by Richet. A play on advantage once more on the top. This time a warning from Duhano. They need the goal now. This has to be for Denmark. As a paddle foul timeout, it's going to be a green card for France again and a penalty. That's a big call, a very big call by the referees. So the referees judging the, that foul there by Riche has prevented a near certain goal. That would have been a one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper from close range. And so a massive moment here. Can Denmark score this goal? Iwerson up against Boudelau. Iwerson saved by Boudelau. Massive save. That's going to give France the entryway into the final. Huge for Boudelau. Denmark have pushed five here. 28 seconds left on the shot clock and on the game. It comes over the top to Lignel. Lignel, experienced player. He plays it off to Debelli. Makes him work for it though, but Debelli does well to get to it. Well, Debelli will go backwards back to Lignel, to Boudelau. Nine seconds. 
Budalau sends it long all the way up the pitch to the captain. That's going to be the game. Three, two, one. Final score. France three, Denmark one, and France are in the World Championship final once more. They will contest the final against Germany. Germany versus France. What an absolute classic final we are having on the men's side of the competition. And I think there can be no doubt from those two semi-finals that the best sides are through to this final now. Commiserations to this Danish side. They will move on to contest the bronze medal position against Great Britain later on today. But for now, it's all about this French side and can they upset a German team